Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, Hero of Zreich, Defender of the Father. I'm off here to a 2 vs. 2. Yes, indeed, a 2 vs. 2. I'm crossing in the woods in the south. We've got the 3rd Armored Division seeking a breakthrough here in the German lines where Isundil and Exmetal are holding off. 15th Panzer Grenadier Division has shifted elements into the bay. While an infantry division is being brought forward to sort of take up the position once the Americans have been driven back. Right, Captain Please. Caveman and Triumph make up the Americans of the 3rd Armoured with Airborne. Heavy Cavalry, Tactical Support, Infantry, more Airborne, more Heavy Cavalry versus Zundid with Encirclement, Spearhead, Jaegerama and Exmental who's gone straight for Firestorm in a rare development. We've got bullets in slightly for infantry except for Zundid who's got 3 Panzer for bullets for Penetration, Reload and Armour. Rears there versus the Sturm Pioneers, feeling a bit there, cool by moving out, and none <laughs> have actually grabbed the connecting car off point. Bit awkward there. Meanwhile, we got the Germans heading westwards, Pioneers, and MD 42 is going to this following up there. And the Americans heading westwards, they were right in the airstone, so basically both sides are spreading out to both few point zones to grab either and secure it for their respective nations. And so far, only one is in the doctrine that is fire. Exmetal there with the surprising choice of fire stream there right off the bat. Of course, after Jimmy Act ends up using it. Perhaps you might even see a flum head, sir. Rather than they're running around here using the foliage, the tree to sort of move about them, up and with the MD42 falls into a run bit more around, and they can actually attack here from the rear as well. Catching it here between two rocket squads, and there we go. Might deal with one, but the other one should be able to push back. We've got Pioneers moving in, but that probably won't be able to be enough. Just almost there, almost there, we got him before 2 push back, quickly getting cut down there. The Americans are suffering some losses, but uh, with MD42 gone, never mind, stood out there for too long as well, because it is quickly coming down, plus the Pioneers could do some good damage with MP40s, pulling up into heavy cover, but they might just be enough now. But perhaps if the rear move up and they get up some body fire, they might just be able to turn things around. They need though, extra tired with Fultz, because it's still on Pioneers and the Cooper Wagon successfully push through. Center we've got the Americans there breaking through. Caveman going straight for the cutoff point. While in the west, there we go, Brian push back here. We're trying to stem the tide here, but ultimately it is a bit too late there. The Germans have successfully routed the two rifle squads there. And now going straight for the fuel point. We got more rifle on the way there for Triumph, for Captain Caveman. Nothing further. He's trying here to fight, and overall he's almost got it. We got Fultz's wave. We got the cool bunker about to rifle flanking, shooting into the rear part there of the cool bunker, shooting up, moving about there, trying to push the Americans out of cover. Well done, but can't maintain here forever. He needs more troops and sand, and there's none nearby. They're all busy here. It looks like experts are more focused on trying to hold the area, preventing further pressure, but at the same time, if you can't hold the cough point, it's rather for naught. Additional Sturm Pioneers while they're down there for X Metal, which makes sense since he's gone here for Fire Sturm, so more Flam and Verfus would be good. Reassurance there being overwhelmed by German infantry, slowly closing in, rather than flanking in their traps, trying to get in behind there on a good position on the Germans, kill them that way. MD42 they're arriving from the north, we've got a sniper on the way there for Isundil. Centerwards there, point grabbed, eastwards, we've got Pulse going to do something anyway for Germany, Deutschland. The Sturm Pioneers remain there, so uh, why are we remaining here? It's Advanced reconnaissance, yes, that's what we'll call it. Advanced reconnaissance. Using this as an observation post for artillery and such, but we don't have any. Shh! Don't think about it. We get to stay in here where it's nice and warm and there's all this vice beer. And don't get shot at, so shut up! Meanwhile, Ralph and Fang in the behind the Pioneers, kind of the ears, and holding up his world denying position. Could try and use Wallify there, so could get some troops suppressed, but looks like none of that. MD42 is uh, bat at base again. <laughs> Sniper moving ahead. Still fighting here for the car point. We holding on there. The more Germans moving in. Still on punish for Trying to move in there. Perhaps trying to move up here. Use the terrain here. The foliage to get closer to them. Not getting shot at too much. Full swimming from the rear. But at the same time, they're getting flanked by the echelons. So the flankers are getting flanked. Here, get out of cover. Get oh, get out of the open. Not get out of cover. There we go. Rifle finger falling back in the face of the Sturm Pioneers and the Fulkers here. Captain Caveman, perhaps taking a bit or just want to get those Fulkers Pioneers either way. Falling back there. In the meanwhile, in the west, Triumph is having some kind of triumph there versus Isundil, who's been pushed back. Also, he has lost the Pioneers. A bit of a loss there for Isundil and the Wehrmacht. Take up here, and we got a battle group headquarters on the way for Exmetal. No huge surprise there. Back at base for the Americans for the third armoured. We've got grenades for Triumph for Captain Cape. Man, we got take up there. We got the Lieutenant. Bit of BARs and Thompsons plus some other bits. There goes John Pioneers. Finally, break out of there. Garrison position there. Good comes straight under fire here from the Lieutenant. BARs and the Thompson just tearing into the poor bastards. Raven here slightly breaking away. 
Super Wagner apparently damaged. Again, has to fall back. Battlegroup Group is almost done. Nothing further here. Needs some pioneers. And a unit lost there. Fultz going to this. Shred it. No, actually, the Storm Pioneers. That's actually worse for X Metal. Nice 300 manpower down the drain. Repairing the Kugelwagen troops reinforcing, could perhaps go to the light infantry gun, perhaps something like that, or perhaps more storm pioneers. And he's also got plenty of uh, munitions, so I mean one option trying to actually go for recoup losses, and that way he should be a bit more aggressive while I'm soaking up some of it. So it looks like no, no flamethrower. Would have figured that instead it is Panzer Sex, the kids and Panzer Buxen. So far the Germans are a bit on the back for the against the repeated American attacks. A heart on the way there for Captain K, and then further trying to really push the hardest to counter to maintain the advantage in that sense. The A half tech is rather the heaviest you can go. Another damage in the Kubelwagen. You know, Fritz, I'm starting to think you're a rather terrible driver. Right, they're falling back though, they've really done a lot there again, managed to cut off the Germans again from the east, but uh, ultimately they can't keep it up there, the right now in a very deplorable state there, almost got wiped, there we go, Lieutenant falls back as well, incendiary grenades off, right from there, could try and go for the fuel act to deny it to the Germans, but no, we connected everything, there we go, and here in the west, the Sundin's men keeps fighting, We'd like to make a nice company going up, the replacement pioneers finally arrived, and we got grenades there from Triumph, holding on to the fuel pioneers as well, and we got a fighting position going up, and Bart Wire as well, good position there. What he basically ensures here is the opponent can't just come into cover, or in this case, sneak behind. For example, utilize the building it. against the Triumph here, so that is not too bad. There we go, going to run straight into the 50 caliber position. Okay. How far they're wrecking the Germans, leaving them in a position where they can't just easily push forward. So that way he secured the left flank. Storm Pioneers, cool by the end of five. We've got more Storm Pioneers on the way for X Metal. He soon did so far, not going to there from the. Uh, We'd like to make a nice company and back here. We got the caps on the way for Triumph. And we got infantry and we got heavy cavalry chosen in Isundil now, the only one not to choose a doctrine. Fighting here and through the centre, we got the rifleman caps pushing ahead there. Cool bag is for cavalry. There you go. You also got the A half to right there with Sertison with the gun and dual 50 calibers. Doing quite a bit of damage there, forcing the Germans back, leaving the eastern points here quite open to them. We got a pack 40 on the way there for Isundil. Of course, use versus vehicle. We could also use to knock out the fighting position there if the Triumph is not careful. Good, of course, here, Mr. Cap Caveman, trying to go for some quick ranges. That would actually do him quite a bit of good. Then, of course, Triumph might be aiming for some light machine guns. Or perhaps a mortar half check. But we got a mortar. Not mortar, but pack howitzer on the way. Weapon racks being unlocked there for Caveman. And the air half doing what he can, of course, need to be careful here. No support, no spotting, so we can't really take full advantage of its range. We've got more German anti tank movements being pulled up to the front there. So that is a bit of a risky gamble there by Caveman. Worst case scenario, could actually end up being abandoned and secured by the enemy. Captain Rav near flanking behind. He soon deal again, sort of striking through it by the looks of it, sort of getting used to the buildings and such against him. Not bad, not bad. MP42 shifting away, trying to hold the rifle, right, but again, it's Triumph's grenade. He can move up, and there you go. Quickly pop a pineapple surprise, blowing some leaves off a tree. Gonna do counter attacking, supported by the sniper. No panzer gonna do no vehicles or anything like that. Down the eastern territories here, Stuart and Pine is a thumb effort, supported by the Kugelwagen, striking into the Americans. Terrible damage, or at least wishing they were. Good enough for creeping ahead, pack 40 moving ahead, caps are standing out there. And pack hard to fire ranging against the German forces here. Mears is moving ahead with minesweepers, but uh, also quickly moving away afterwards. Having active and shot ahead, light infantry gone away there for X Metal, adding a bit of light artillery there. Meanwhile, a caveman strengthening his grip here on the eastern side of the map. He could consider himself some fighting positions, or of course, ranges are also an option. He could try and go for combined arms already, though there's not much use to it. Though, of course, maps would allow his half pack to shoot straight into the German base without getting shot on the turn. Captain fighting to hold the bridge and keep it open for America, but ultimately, he is rather undergunned for that pursuit since the enemy is mostly infantry. Fighting here for the cop one again here, half tech supporting still on the exchange Lieutenant Reifman. All a lot of nasty firepower here. X Metal is really not doing too well there. There you go, artillery arrives for X Metal. For Isundil, we got Panzer Grenadiers. And looks like our Kedma crew got annihilated. And now the Germans really on the back foot here. Need to turn this around pretty rapidly, gain some fuel before the Americans really take advantage of having two fuel points and just roll out a lot of tanks. We can got the caches up here. It's munitions caches for Triumph, supplying 
further bits there for both him and his teammate. More weapons, BARs, light machine guns, bazookas, perhaps some ranges and submachine guns. Combined arms, do not neglect how powerful that ability can be when properly utilized. Panzer gun nearly lined for gun Kuba Wagner head there, venturing to sipping down the road. Yeah, come on, Dieter, we need to get there quickly. And a mine right there, and oh, straight into the mine. Well placed there by Captain Caveman. Fuel cash up for him, so now they're really sort of preparing for the longer fight here. The two American players, good work. His has got nothing in that in mind, though he's got the Panzer Grenadier, which only gives him a bit more firepower versus the American infantry. Fuel care's almost done. Half tracks on watch. Stuart Pioneer is supporting the Grenadier, pushing forward. Straight into the half track. No anti tank support. The Pack 40's not quite there. As soon as yet to choose a doctrine. Further pushing forward. Straight into the flame throws the assault rifles. Pack 40 not setting up yet. And there we go. This is turning a bit ugly in the west. The MG42 holding up the rear. they're going for the mini support. Sniper supporting as well. Folks going to these moving heads to on is pushed back. Panzer going to the, uh, just trying to make sure they aren't spotted. There you go, Patrick's flying set up the pack 40, set up the pack 40. Isundil, Schnell, ah, scheiße. It looks like the Patrick's and the Kenner did the trick nonetheless here. Captain came and perhaps was a bit too loose there with it and quickly got him knocked out there after some initial successes. Though, on the other hand, experts are seem to be losing at a lot. Infant gun was too slow retreating it and now the Americans have it. That is bad news, that is more for the Americans, which, you know, the Germans don't really need at the moment. Right from flanking in here, Sniper, Grenadiers, got grenade off against the Grenadier. MG42 didn't count us all up, Triumph advancing too far there, lots of action. Expertal has yet to examine, consider further taking up, or even getting, say, something like a flak half track, which could be helpful somewhat in controlling the infantry, you know. And since the Americans are putting a lot of hell in the infantry, you know, flat half in that sense could be quite an change there for Expertal. Panzer Grenadiers routed, though we got a massive push here. Fultz Grenadiers, Sturm Pioneers, Grenadiers, and so on. And the Americans, by the looks of it, have already made off there with a light infantry gun. Meanwhile, Grenadiers have been run off by the captain. Ever angry, ever looking for vengeance, and we got tech up for Isundil. Good work there, some armor should help out. Meanwhile, Germans are making the best they can on the eastern side. Western side, you're seeing lighter skirmishing. At the same time, though, the Germans are at least working together. It seems like the Americans so far just sort of working separately. Which is only to the effort of the Germans, since that way they can just focus on one American player at the time. <laughs> and that way, gain a larger chunk of the map. Exmetal still not taking up getting any vehicles. Is he playing for a Flamheads or something? That would be uh, rare. No? No Flamheads, sir? No? Germans hold it. Another massive push here. Lots of BARs. The Browning Automatic. And by Joe. Yeah, in fact, seeing the Flamheads are about, I think, only 10 reactive made in the war. They were, I, I believe, specifically made for the mission of actually clearing up the machine line bunkers. And such. Where's 12? By the way, not a lot. Fun little fact there. Oh! That was a bit of a friendly fire there. There you go, Flamheads are moving in. Burning away, and we got the MD-34 being added as well. Rafa moving in. Need to be careful. Pantagon is here versus the Major and Rafa. Both light machine guns. But they do have some coverage. It's a bit risky. Plus, we've got the pack out of firing in. Flamheads moving ahead here. Also, technically, that machine gun there could actually remotely control from inside the tank. That you still had to sort of get up to sort of actually reload it and expose yourself that way. Also, in fact, some Stroop 3G models later ones to this would also have the same machine gun. Fun fact there. Are they doing some damage there? More fuel caches up for the Americans, probably they're really planning it, they're really thinking something with armor. And turning against Germans up right now could actually be quite well for them. I mean, they could both get one out there and sort of really distract the Germans. And experts are there with only a flamhead and a bunch of Panzer Kekernev, which are a bit of a hard time of dealing with it. Shooting, burning, damaged engine. 
closing in on veterans you want, which would, I believe, improve the burst length, actually making it a bit more potent. You got the Sapoma Corp, there's at least a Sunder can get some out from armor, though he might need a Stoot first, since that's a bit cheaper, and also a bit more sort of specifically mine, it's worth sitting with the American armor, though can still deal with infantry, of course, and machine gun on top. You got a Jackson on the way there for Captain Caveman, and for Triumph, I'm guessing uh, Sherman Tank, yes indeed. Pulse there with a pilfered flamethrower, looks like one's still playing. Nope, it's not in the dust, interestingly enough. And Flamhead's doing the can there with the MD34, they're mounted. Meanwhile, though, as focus is moving there a bit towards the east, soon did quickly shift back to Wester to push back Triumph from it, and seems to have had some successes. Pants are going to be a veteran run, though, so if I'm not all kills, the Flamhead so just keeps on trying to do something there, doing some damage, but Suga hits against it. Very close there to veterans who won. Still on Pioneers, wanting to put away that minesweeper and do some damage. Another anti tank rock grenade, really, they're moving up ahead with the Bazookas, trying to knock it out there. Expert desperately trying to escape with the Slam Hedger, not intent on losing it quite yet. Further shots there, going off against it. Meanwhile, further pressure here, going out against Triumph's men, Panzer Grenadier, Grenadier, Lap Machine Gun to the short rifles. And we got a lieutenant flanking in, but can't do anything against it. Can't. And there we go, he actually caught in a second Slam Hedger to save the first one, somehow. And there you go, veterans are one for the first flam headser. Another machine gun on the way. But Sukat fails to penetrate the front line there, the headser. Headser's while they had 60 millimeters of sloped armor, doing a lot of damage there. Lieutenant being absolutely roasted. Just an inferno unleashed there, and they jumped up the cavalry and move up, move through it. Need to pull back that flam headser. This is Jackson. Don't take that lightly, Exmodel. And the West Hisham striking in there. Panther fast off, but nothing further there. Pack 42 far away. We've got a Panzer 4 on the way there for Tisundil. Certainly, all the bulletins is expecting at least once one Panzer 4. Though he still, I think, would benefit from getting some Stooks out. And he still hasn't chosen a doctrine here at all. Nothing. Nada. Bupkis. Of course, they're charging across the shallow waters under fire there from the lightest in front of shots. So two flam headsers. A very rare sight of anything in any battle. Clearly Exmatan is a great believer in the flam headser. Based on the headser 38T, which of course is based on the Czechoslovakian Panzer 38T as the Germans called it. The Czechoslovakians had a more specific name for it, but Damn if I know Czechoslovakian. But it was a surprisingly reliable tank, which of course then served as the basis for the heads of which was also surprisingly reliable. Though the Czechoslovakian decided to apparently make the heads because the Germans never quite fought that one through. Uh, apparently, actually uh, laid in some uh, slight uh, traps inside the design of the heads, uh, some small sabotage that way, including if the driver's lid got hit, it could apparently blind the driver. Fun fact. There go Jackson playing against the headsers there. Forced them away. One there, five kills, close to actually two with more speed and rotation. Jackson taking a few hits. We've got Rafferman flanking in there, lots of the earth, some guns, Panzer gun is there. Wants to pop up a grenade, a lot of into there bunched up. But there we go, we got the flam headser reacting to this American affront to Deutschland. But the only true way to deal with it is fire. Meanwhile, Panzer 4 moving ahead there, Jackson being rolled back. The Zookas moving up there to stall the Panzer 4. Flamheads has continued their mission of incendiary doom to purge that which is not German. It doesn't look enough German anyways. Ah, straight into a mine there. Good work there by uh, Captain Cayman. He's acting in down mines. Many players have to go for heavy cavalry and never utilize the mines, which is a bit of a shame. 50 cover crew there spotted by the heads and they go opening up, forcing it away. We got light infantry going there, lots of troops hanging about here, suddenly heavy fighting here. We got soon here making a good break, we're going straight for the car point, the car point has been by the way, lost its fuel point, Panzer need to hit the cover, in there Kong men there. We might be Panzer Grenadiers, we aren't Panzer for sh heaven's sake. There we go, half unit gone, force to fall back. Desperate fighting here, trying to get another munitions cache there, out. Sean moving in there, another Jackson all the way there for Triumph. Captain Caveman might now be setting up for the Jackson, or Pershing, he's only got the fuel close there and the manpower as well. Flamheads have actually two falling back, other one uh, needs repairs as well. There you go, Rifle being forced away there by the 
Large amount of flamethrowers there by Exmetal. Troops reinforcing, Jack's moving up, their flam heads need to pull back, anti tank need anti tank weapon need to be pulled up. So in the Vetri 2 has the best chance of getting out due to the speed bonus it gets. The other one uh, is a bit dead in the water. Sherm there flanking using the terrain here, perhaps to get close there, but ah, stop, 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 doesn't continue with it. Artillery fire rain down here. This is a rather intense match to be honest. I'll wait, Jack's moving ahead, there he is in a bit of trouble, Flam heads are desperately trying to escape, here Jack moves in, McKenna opening up, I'll wait, Exmetal should consider, I think, taking up, he's gone for the mechanised revenant, and Flam heads are cooked up, the fuel caught on fire, bad luck. Mechanised, yeah, but I think we're better off going for the spear punch at quarters instead, you know, going for some Panzer Falls, even just a Yak Panzer initially, sort of worked with the Flam heads there, just he had something a bit more serious to do with armour, a bit more mobile as well. Jackson pulled back. Germans a bit still on the back foot, victory points wise, there's only a bit bleeding out there. Troops needing up their pack to flank, good work, good work. Captain Caveman going for Jackson, he could actually I think, go for a Pershing now he wants to, and also, interestingly, he hasn't bothered with the single Ranger squad at all, you'd think he'd go for that as well. But right here being hauled, it's simply got too much firepower with no cover, I mean, he should at least lay down a smoke screen then. He said he just stood out in the open, there's a lot of Germans with like, machine guns, assault rifles and whatnot. Bazooka dropped there, Captain taking quite a punishing beating. Moving up, they're clearing up the minefield, and there you go, Flamheads joins in. Murdering so dirty Americans. Cleansing some with fire. Are you all right, Herr Leutnant? You, you seem to be smiling an awful lot when, uh, you know, we're burning all of these Americans. Uh, now don't worry, I'm uh, I'm fine, I'm more than fine. More than fine. And there we go, Councillor Jackson went there for the M26 Pershing. Pershing rolling about. Hunter gonna do this, gonna do this. Troops reinforcing. So now the Allies have the armor advantage, numerically, in instance, armor wise. Whereas the Germans got a Panzer IV and a Flumhetzer. Panzer IV being flanked by the Pershing and the Jack need to pull it back, need to blitz, need to blitz. Perhaps go for Doxon with smoke, pop that and get out of there. That 40 opening up. Pershing misses, pop smoke, so he's gone for spearhead. Almost got the Jack, Pershing there. Goes straight into the German line, should pop, beating for that. Flamhead's also pulling back, almost at the fuel point. This is fine, seems to sort of focus here. I think Triumph could have sort of supported better than he just actually at that moment sort of just drove up, pick up past the anti-tank and the Panzer IV, they could have knocked out that position. Instead he just sort of held up there. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, the rifle pushing forwards. Artillery fire raining down there on the German infantry as they charge forward to counter-attack. Eastern side just seems to have forgotten for the time being. Also got a fuel cache up here for Isundals on both sides here. Going for fuel caches, good work. Panzer gonna do his Vection T3. Eight kilts on the flamheads of halfway to Vection T3. Kenneth is creeping up there through the shallow waters, getting weak, wet feet, and there we go. Good here on the Jackson Sherman doing nothing. Not entirely sure going for Triumph here, seems to be doing something, but uh, he's got a lot of armor standing about there. I do think, again, that engagement could look very differently had he sort of been, you know, a bit more of a help. Rathman hitting care of some Foxes rushing forwards there under Exmetal's command. And the Flamhead is going to need some repairs. Going for the central point there, eastern side, though, very open, a good support assault, assault there, maybe the Flamheads are could see through it, though of course some armor I think should also be there, besides the flamheads. Uh, he's moving up, looks like he's, oh, gonna burn out the uh, fighting position, lighting and fire, turning into a barbecue pit. Though he perhaps should finish it. Oh well, forced away there. Sherman arrived to the scene, person there being repaired, almost fixed up again. Damage engine on the flamheads up. Not good there, and fighting here in the centre, right from pushing forward, it's going to do a lot of that machine and just shredding them. Got a fifth cover there ready, and it is time here for the Mickey Minnesota country. In terms of damage, things are sort of looking a bit equal there, though the Americans, uh, it's actually again equal. Isunda there is sort of the one leading head there for the Germans, he's not quite doing as much damage as Captain Cayman. On the other hand, Expertile is carrying the fight better than Triumph, though they have the same amount of kills. On the other hand, Isindal has definitely got a lot more kills there. We can obviously see the Exmetal so far the one suffering the most. Which has been on Sam's got larger scores, but a bit unfortunate as well. So in that sense, Isun Exmetal on Triumph sort of rather need to pick up the pace a bit there. And Isundil, of course, and uh, Captain Cayman just need to keep doing that since what they're doing. Army value wise, we can sort of see here Captain Cayman ahead, Isundil, oh, Triumph suffering a bit there, Exmetal and 
You soon do again. We can see here overall sort of bit more expensive fact like your force value wise, but uh, seems to be falling behind there. In terms of map control, allies seem to sort of you know doing all right. In particular, caveman is rather the one doing all the work. So again, it's very much Captain Caveman pulling the American effort. Triumph is doing all right, but at times he just seems to sort of so far he sort of stop up then just not doing anything. Again, he had several opportunities to sort of really do some damage, but he doesn't smoke. He just stands still with his tanks while his teammate then takes the beating which is a bit problematic. So there are some definite issues there, but at least they're, you know, doing caches and such. But for the for Triumph, again, he's more aggressive, he needs support team and better, he needs to flank more. In that sense, the Germans are better at working together than the Americans right now. They do seem to be a bit more prickly in that sense. There's definitely some uh, work there that could be improved upon. More armor for Triumph now would be a good move. I think some Shermans, and then sort of try again further try for an assault. Perhaps some Scots to help deal with things, and lay down some smoke screens without having to pay munitions for it. Maybe save the missions there for a coordinated uh, artillery barrage there, so you can further strike in, cause further chaos. Captain K, man, I think, would benefit from ranges, you know, some infantry, but I should try to use some combined arms with the Pershing and the Jackson. Remember, if infantry is nearby, they get more range. Which basically means you can just sort of fit, you know, sit back and shoot them with the Jackson. That means you can really just sit back and shoot at the enemy. And plus, of course, to get more line of sight, you can also pursue quite nicely. I mean,. I think a proper assault here, for example, triumph moves in from here, attacks from there, then uh, Captain Cayman attacks from here, sneaks some forces up here using combined arms as well, some artillery right in the midst of everything, and that could actually really crush the Germans here. Or they could just you know, go up through here and attack the German base head on, I mean, there's really a lot of options there, they just, at the same time, for some reason, they just go through here, which is rather giving the Germans the best chance of minimizing sort of where they have to spread out, the defense is concentrated, and just, you know, do a lot of damage that way, so there are some issues there for the Americans. Otherwise, Captain Cayman could also benefit from more Shermans or some Scots or whatever. For the Germans, they need to push more on the eastern side. Again, it tends to be a bit lightly defended there, so trying to spread out the Americans. That would be just pushing forwards, grabbing some fuel, taking some territory, taking some knives, laying down some mines as well in the process would be good. Expertile could focus on benefit from some recall losses, but otherwise, lay down some mines, man. And get up a spare panzer quarters and begin getting some panzers. I mean, a flamhead really needs, you know, something else to work with, particularly when there's other armor out there. It needs something else to draw the fire, otherwise, it's just too big of a, well, easy of a target, which can't really defend itself. So, he needs it fixed up, but also some armor for it to work with. It is very much a support vehicle. In particular, since he's not using it to support his infantry very well, and the infantry is having a bit of a hard time supporting it, you know. Armor would be good. Even a Yak Panzer, I think, could sort of do it for him. Isundil, I think, should get out a Stug to sort of just provide some heavier firepower there versus the enemy armor, front some machine gun type versus infantry, and perhaps get a second Stug down the road. He could sort of do well until he can then later on get a Tiger. But again, they need to focus me on the Eastern Sign as well. Beyond that, not to myself to sort of comment on as such, for the time being, anyways. So, let us return to the fight. Rather than under fire, going to be a see got Lieutenant flanking in, I tell you if I'm running over there, Flamheads are still in need repairs, damaged engine, probably not the best place you want to be when you got a flame for a tank full of fuel. There you go, Jackson trains the Panzer 4, bit risky there, bit risky there. Passing goes up, needs to blitz, pop smoke. Panzer was there with 9 kills, and we got a rocket barrage going in there from uh, Expertile, right there. A bit obvious, but I suppose helps cover his teammate up. No, they're not moving! Caveman, I think, was just maintaining too much, and the rockets actually took out his Jackson. That was surprisingly effective there for Expertise. Flamheads are ready again. Smoke down there, good, but uh, just because you can't be seen doesn't mean you can't get burned. But there you go, Jackson uh, saves the day there for the rifle, showing they don't become barbecue. Meanwhile, Pats was holding the center. There you go, Pershing was up, wipes out half the unit. We got fine some movement here again in eastern side, some folks going to be dispatched. Still on the side of the Panzer Corps there for extra time. He needs to start. Flamheads needs to go away. Damage engine Jackson in the pursuit. And there you go. Pack 40 seems to save the day, allowing him to get past the tree line there. And he does not pursue there again. Triumph holds back. We've got smoke down there. White phosphorus here from the pack. Hard. Good work, by the way. It is a bit of a neglected ability right there. That does force the Germans a bit back there. But uh, oh, there we go. He's actually pushing forwards. Panda Jackson. Triumph's got something going for him. No, no, no. He loses all. Yes, no. Yes. Sort out the traffic, man. Rather than there with the lone bazooka, the panzer wing mod, the assault continues here. Then at least we got a spare panzer quarters up there, he needs to lay down until you're on it. He calls up a priest, but focus down the spare panzer quarters. Focus it down, where's the Jackson? Ah, he might sit up, then I could actually ruin his attempt at flanking through the Kenner for right. Grenade there, heavy loss on the pioneers. Panzer 4 pulling back, Mitchie 2. Tiller reading down there on the spare panzer quarters, but it's too late, too late. 
American infantry getting slaughtered and forced back. Eunice the priest keeps flying shots. They're going to need a bit of trouble though. And we got Pershing flanking in there on its own with no support. Where's the Pershing? Da uh, Jackson, I mean. Bit risky there, bit risky. We got Kevin holding up. We need to pull back the Pershing. We need to pull back the Pershing. Lay down the smoke train. You got the f uh, smoke munitions. No! Uh, the idea was nice, it just wasn't supported well enough. Or well, should at least lay down the smoke from here using his off map smoke barrage to get it out of there. But he failed there, so that was, I think, a tactical blunder by Captain Caveman. The idea was nice, the execution was sloppy. Close to Vetsy Flea down the Flamhead, sir. That would be the first time I've seen a Vetsy Flea Flamhead, so actually, it's ran up seeing a Vetsy 2 1. And then Vetsy Flea. Panther 4, though, down here to the Jackson, cooks it up, getting vengeance for the crew lost in the Pershing. Progress being getting in the east. Rather than push back Panzer, and there's a sniper and whatnot there. MU42 setting up. Fair Panzer quarters fixed up. Panzer 4 there. No further armor from the Sundan. He just needs to stick to the Panzer Force. And Flamheads are going after the Lieutenant. Very close to 3 getting kills. 10 kills. A few Deutschland, which means rate improved rate of fire. Which I think would primarily apply to the machine gun. Which isn't too bad, I suppose. Smoke down there. Ish. No. Jack's moving up. You pick up there with the flam head, sir. Panzer 4 doing the county of pack hard, sir. Vetch with the three moving at the echelons. Priest unleashing hell. Captain K man setting up for another Pershing, I imagine. Sturm Pioneers making an assault there. Under 550 caliber. Need to flam head to support. Clear out those American support weapons. Very close to Vetch and three there. Can he get it? Bazooka's flying against the flam head, sir. Burning of it, says for Dan Tamley Cannon. Stuart Pani assaulted. And there we go, Vection to flee. 12 kills for Deutschland. Holding the Americans, there we go, burning away. 15 kills now, all of a sudden things are really going well there for the Flam Head, sir. And it can actually go towards Fetching G4 now, which means increased range. That would be pretty impressive if it hits that. But 48 points left. The Germans really need to make some kind of effort on the victory points and hold them for once. Germany cannot afford failure at this point. Panzer 4 here, halfway to Fetching one right and falling back. Orbis of Dino Rami there for Exmental Farmheads are falling back. So he's got the Shroud Panzer of quarters now, just need some armor out of it. Jack's moving about, Fultz is moving ahead. Need to get those victory points, man, and we got a light machine gun there dropped. 25 points, 21 points left here, looking uh, pretty grim for Deutschland. Sturm Pony is charging forwards, Orbis of Darden arriving as well. For the 15th Panzer Grenadier Division. Jackson Sean moving up, they're opening up the Grenadiers. <coughs> Rather than spearheading forwards. Ten points, ten points for Germany. That's Captain nine. Chili fire rain down there. Flam heads are fit to fight again. Almost got the point there. They've stalled the bleed, but that won't last long. Flam heads seem to be moving up. They're speeding ahead. Strung the center, showing the opening up the Grenadiers. Killing them. Still some time there for the Pershing, but he's very close to Jesse Mampa there. Go right in front of the Flam Head, sir. 16 kills. There we go, Ian crushing them here. Axbatal is desperate to push back the American infantry, no matter the cost. And he's very close to Vetsin 4 there, actually. Which would mean increased range. Got the Jacks moving up. Shoot, scores a hit. Flam Heads needs to pull back, but it's actually Vetsin 4 now. No, pull it back, pull it back, Axbatal. Christ, that's the first time I've seen a Vetsin G4 Flamhead, sir. Madness. Could he actually hit Vetsin G5 with it? That would mean more damage. That would really make it a killer, then. Shaman on the way there for Triumph. Grenades locked into the smoke. They know what idea where they're going to end up. 19 kills in the pack, Howard, sir. Light infantry gun, I imagine, still shooting up there for... Uh, Captain Caveman, six kills. And... 
Well, he can soon go for the Art Panzer. He can also save up for a Panzer IV, which I think would be better. That way, he can actually have something for the Flumhead to support and have something to draw fire away from the Flumhead. So, got another Sherman there for Triumph. He's relaying a lot of armor. Eight points left here. Flumhead's moving up, burning away 17 kills. Jackson shoots up, need to pull it back, need to pull it back. What are you doing, Expertal? Almost got the Jackson, but the Jackson gets the Flumhead, sir. Nine. So that was an extremely rare sight of Veterans before Flumhead, sir. And then he gets another one. I think he should have gotten some other armor first before getting another Flumhead, sir. Panzer Wall here versus the Sherman Force in that back. Got another Panzer Wall on the face. Soon he just keeps getting Panzer Force. Doesn't care for anything else. Pack out turning about there. 20 kills. Yes, not, no, Major actually. And Captain Ning with the can there. Sherman taking heavy damage. Chomps up here with the Panzer Wall and the Panzer Shake. And Bazookas and Wall thrown at it. Panzer Wall needs to retreat down to one man. And another Pershing arrives for Captain Caveman. He's taking some losses though. Flumhead's moving ahead here. No machine gun added. Fox is being rushed in the center. And Jack's moving in there. Right from the pack, 40 veterans he flee to. All things. Completely wreck it. Flumhead's here being against for the Pershing. Flumhead's a lot of trouble here. Got a Kenner from the up veterans he too. Still on Pioneers here. Need to put away the bloody Minesweeper. Minesweeper. Looks like the veteran he flee just don't give a damn. Pushes back the lieutenant. He's about to lose the Flumhead to there. Flam heads are down, still at 8 victory points, 293 points left there for Americans. Fighting for the central victory point, Panzer 4 moving ahead. Another Panzer 4 waiting for repairs, so you could just pull it back over to the mechanized regiment, you know, have that fix it. All of a sudden retreating right past the Pershing, Dual Pony is moving up the Pilfert Bazooka. Panzer 4 there flanking, not trying to get the Pershing. Looks like they're the person successfully escapes here, the Wrath of the Third Reich. There we go, Panzer 4 over at the repair station. Whew, so much going on there. Priest almost fits into one. A bit more action here on the right flank. Sham they're repairing. Not a lot of smoke uses there from Triumph. Well, except from Rifle, nothing from the Sherman, no bigger smoke screens. And still no real concentrated effort from the Americans compared to the Germans who do seem all willing track to cooperate. Machine gun away again there from his fourth flumhead, sir. He's getting so many. Again, I'm not saying you shouldn't get them, but get some other armor before getting the flumhead, sir. Still on Pioneer's force run through the flames of the flumhead, sir, while the lieutenant, of course, all stands out there for the few kills. Pershing needs some repairs there. Jumps doing anything they can to hold every victory point there possible. Right from there, taking over five. We got all of a sudden, we got the uh, Flamheads there. We got un Pershing Marine, perhaps looking for another Flamhead to wreck. Possibly dealing with rifle in the west. Again, there, for should probably try to take up to get some hits on the uh, Pershing. All of a sudden, hold table right there. You go, grenade off. Almost right the boss. There you go. He soon did. He has secured the western side, cut off the mech from the western field point. Doing spike damage to Canada. The Panzer Force 1 Sherman down. Betty 2 on 1 Panzer Force. The Panzer Force slowly closing on that as well. Standing out in the middle of the road. A former rather poor defensive bastion and simply cannot resist that much firepower. Snipers, grenadiers, Panzer grenadiers there. And. Did they have a light machine gun? No, nope, just assault rifle still. Two Panzer Force machine guns top them, plus some. Veterans are there in nasty work. Lieutenant rushing in there. Looks like it's now kept. Caveman time to try and clean up Triumph's mess. h wrap round might be a good choice to get off a finishing shot down any of the Panzer Fours. Looks like oh, there's no sign of it though. Panzer Four almost dead. Almost, but not quite. Halfway to it. See two smoke pop Panzers pulling back. Flamheads are moving out. German infantry caught in the middle of the road now. The ones to suffer. Right from flanking in there, but quickly suppressed here by well placed Vexen to 3 MD4. Two sniper right from the Pershing. Panzer 4 down. Sniper dead, obviously. <laughs> right from the gun with the Pershing. There's no way he could survive, could survive that. K 
Curtin now for shooting, but under fire of the priest, Sherman barely escapes. Pershing moves up, very close to victory, too. very close. Puts them in a pretty bad position, actually. But it looks like the Pershing can't see that far. But now the Americans are very much in the back foot compared to earlier in the game, where they were rather the dominant ones. Flum hits, actually moving out of burning way now, the ones near the ambulance, the cheeky bastard. But there you go, Pershing flanks. Flum hits in a pretty bad position there, could risk losing another one. The might of America's armor. There we go, Veteran T2 on the Pershing. Increased mobility, making it harder for the flam to hit to escape. But also having to pop grenades at the enemy. Whoa, oh, Pershing misses. Uh, but not for long. Not for long. Jackson supporting. Hits on the Pershing. Lots of shots there, right? Lieutenant Hiddin with the Fulton trying to knock out the fuel. Cash more till running down there. Cash down, cash down, but there you go, Pershing shoots. Almost got the Fulton's gonna do his wife, and there we go, taut. Expired. He's doing the Panzer 4, Panzer 4, there's Ronnie to move up there. Fighting position, he's still standing, actually. The Germans have yet to clear it out. Has been a surprisingly good investment then for Triumph. I suppose he's. One and only triumph so far, I'd really say, in this battle. Jackson about to get knocked, shown how to fall back. We got a full on assault here. Lots of German with bazookas, machine guns, pilfered from there. We got Panther 4 supporting. A lot of fire there against the Americans. We got the flam. No, another flam hits. That's the fifth flam hits from the Expertile. Again, he needs to get something else before you know, to support the Flamheads at the moment. They're just easy targets, particularly with the Pershing hits. We need some support, they're in a Yak Panzer. Would of course, the Americans to be a bit more cautious with their armor around the Flamheads at the very least. But there you go, Pershing. Flank him with two Panther Force. Pack 40, veterans in free. Delivers the killing blow there. There's a smoldering wreck. Major there, desperately fighting, but he's taking heavy losses and is about to get wiped. There we go. Triumph is getting annihilated on the fields there, and Captain k is not doing much better. We've got artillery strike straight here around the ambulance. Devastating rocket strike there. In this case, though, the Americans managed to evade it. Just there behind enemy lines, engaging the Vietnamese Panzer IV crew. Captain Kaven moving his troops ahead. He still hasn't bothered with any ranges at all. I'm a bit again surprised at that. Generally, that is one of the primary reasons you go for you know heavy cavalry besides uh, the Pershing. I mean, he's easy to use some mines. So that's good. I mean, that's thumbs up. But you know, he could have used a lot more of this doctrine, to be honest. Panther forty under fire. The priest just continues to deliver. It's very explosive sermon. Ten kills. Veteran to one. Uh, seems like a rather poor target he's chosen. Man's right past the panther oh, oh, no, no, no. There we go, good hit, good hit. Almost got that panzer four. And there you go, Flamhead's been flanked by a Jackson. That is going to be the fifth Flamhead to that next baton lost. If he just get some armor for them to work with, or at least support them properly with some anti tank troop units. But none of that. So he's just flowing away Flamheads right now. Uh, it's not quite as impressive as getting a flam hitter to Vetsen to 4, to be honest. That's definitely something that the X-Men you know, should consider for future battles. Not throwing no flam hitters like that. Seems like Captain Caveman has given up on getting any further purging for the time being. Just getting another Jackson. Sherman about to get knocked out there by rockets. The Americans are very much in the back foot. Their victory point are quickly draining out. Got one victory point, but the other two are still very much under German control. John Pioneer is gaining Vetsen T4. That's just there with 21 kills, Vetsen T3. Got a fragmentation bombing run there, wiping out the Light Infantry Gun crew and numerous other American troops. The Lufthansa seems to be getting a bit more active in this fight as well now. That's when it's not bode well for the Americans. Grenade there, Ralph Grenade off as well. Panzer 4 setting out. Very close, but you see that. It's very close. Jackson opens up the 90 minute gun. 
And there we go, finding man to clear out the uh, finding position. It only took them about, what, 40 minutes to do so. And flamethrowers and bazookas to do it. Yeah, look at this. We are Germany's finest pioneer. Uh, perhaps not, but we got the job done. Looks like we're getting into the excitement. Now they actually managed to kill themselves a lot of machine guns, and now they got bazooka, a lot of machine gun, and assault rounds. With those has some very heavily equipped Panzer going to use hardened veterans, Iron Cross first class, and so on. Suppressed though, which means they aren't quite expected as the infantry is standing right against them. But they're forcing back the Jackson there, actually. He must show them they're trying to do some supportive fire, but that's not quite working out. We've got pack out of the left behind. Incendiary rounds there being unleashed against the rear echelons. Well, it's done there, actually. Good timing for it. While well, they're desperate, they have to stand about and actually allowing more damage over the incendiary rounds. And I bet the fleet machine gun really just ratcheting up the damage there. And there you go, they're just getting shredded, dropping their bazookas. Veteran D3 on the Panzer IV. Artillery, oh! Catching the Germans' tanks and infantry right in the artillery barrage. Well timed there by Triumph. Shattering the Veteran D3 Panzer IV before. Isundil could react. That's a small victory there. Small Triumph for Triumph. Got another airstrike in though. Around here to clear up the 50 caliber. A bit of return vengeance, but... Uh, that was definitely not a veteran to leave Panzer for Sundil took out there. He's got more Panzer than this though. Grabbing a bazooka. And he's finally called up a Yacht Panzer. At least that's not much, which is now there's no flamheads for it to support, no to work with. And there's not enough armor now, it's just mostly infantry, is it? Yeah. There you go, Jackson versus Yacht Panzer. Stuart and Pioneers need to put away the minesweeper, remember? If they put away the minesweeper, they got another assault rifle to kill the enemy with. In fact, they're running right up, securing a Panzer Trek. Bring in the Yacht Panzer deal with enemy armor. Jackson straight, I'm into it. Dear, oh dear. Jackson misses, he could actually get the Jackson over this Yacht Panzer. He's coming in the west, their center being lost, eastern point being lost as well. Need to counterattack. Schnell, schnell, für Deutschland. Another Panzer for the way for Sundil. Kedmerf has been rushed forward. Just the Umpani is following up. We've got more folks with the way for extra time. Not seeing more orbits are done. Yeah, Panzer bringing in a ting. Hits there from a Jackson. Grenadiers, Panzer Grenadiers moving forward. Ralph Gate in the fifth cab, but engine damage on the Yak Panzer. Just the moving ahead. Jackson's over rolling back. Ran from it. Ting hits there from Bazookas. A last ditch assault here. The Germans need to get those victory points back, otherwise they could be able to lose down to five points now. Five points. Stuart Pines getting back to five. Yak Panzer rolling ahead again. 25 kills on the Panzer Grenadiers. Ralph Nagy getting absolutely shredded out. And then we got the Panzer four moving forward. Yet. Sean moving up. Mentioning the two tanks of the Panzer four. Captain Caveman's forces are getting devils, decimated. Still don't think we actually seen this Ranger unit from an go. Finally. After like ages, he's actually considering getting Rangers out now. He just feels like it's a bit too late now. A bit too late. Consolidate our forces. We're left with 50 points. Ken over there reaching Vetsen T2. Rockets flying all over the place. Panzer Force counter attacking straight at the Sherman there. One hit, one misses. Rangers moving forward, Thompson's up, Singer's almost done. Captain almost there, and there you go, white bazooka dropped. Rangers can of course pick it up. And still have the sub by the way. Brief to get to the grenade, but seems like he's cancelled it. Jackson was out on there, you go, Grenadier's being murdered out on the other versus those Thompsons. Lethal stuff there, lethal stuff. Can still pick up the bazooka, I should again note. Panzer Force are being pushed back by the Jackson, the severe bombardment. Eastern side there, we got Steel and Pioneers on the Eastern Victory Point. More Steel and Pioneers being moved up. Getting left a crew lost. Rangers finally evicted. Nine versus five. GG.
And there we go, game over, a bloody fight with some very rare sights, flum hitters and a veteran for flum hitter. Some interesting elements here as well. Overall, though, the Americans basically came down to again. They weren't really good sort of exploiting the eastern half of the map. Now, they had several times to sort of attack the base. There were also some poor tactics at times with Captain Caveman, but also Triumph. Several times, you know, they just sort of stop up, not do anything, or send a single unit with little support there, not use their abilities fully. I also think Captain Caveman could easily have done a lot more with the Doctrine ranges, but also combined arms, or for that matter, the smoke. I mean, there's a lot there, the good parts of the Doctrine he just missed out on. So, definitely some room for improvement. It was great, though, they made use of cash. Same for the Germans. I mean, thumbs up there. Triumph, though, again, should have been more aggressive at times, and he should have worked better with his team, and I think that's also one of the things on debt the Americans. They weren't quite good at teamwork compared to the Germans, and soon the next until actually worked together at times, whereas the Americans sort of just stuck to their half of the map, and didn't really seem to coordinate, and that gave the Germans advantage. Experts, however, though, did drag behind, and I'm not saying you don't get flam hits at all, but... At a certain point, they need to work with other armor to have the armor draw their effort, of course, support them. Otherwise, the flamheads are just are too easy targets. So that was basically the problem there for x -Mentile. He just wasted so much fuel and manpower in those three other headses after the veterinary foreheads. And again, had that veterinary foreheads have been probably supported, it probably would have done better as well. So there were some definite issues there as well for x -Mentile. He soon did, I think, could have snuck in a stroke there and perhaps some earlier panzer grenades, but overall, he played well and he certainly carried the fight quite nicely. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed this match, I hope you learned something from it, I hope it gives you different matches, if it did, want to subscribe, tell a friend, share it with everyone, if not, send a new friend and provide some feedback in the comment section, and this is Imperial Link, and cheers, thank you for watching, and hope to see you all another time, bye.